Hey y'all, we back. See you in the rear view. Number four. Y'all ready for this next class? I'm in it to win it. I am a wild card. Absolutely. I love the song. Let me tell you something. If we had more time, we would play that one all the way out too and dance it out, right? Because that's what we are here to do. Excuse me. I am so excited because this is number four, number four in the series today. We are all here to celebrate heritage. I am Karen Baxter. If you haven't been here for the last four, and don't know me or last three and don't know me. I am Karen Baxter, Ms. Creative CEO. I am your uh, empowerment coach, your mindset mentor and your craft business bestie. And what I do is I help women get out of their way and level up their mindset and their skill set so they can take their businesses out of the back room into the boardroom and straight to the bank, okay? That's what I do. And I've been partnering with Michaels for about a year, a little over a year now. I love them, they love me. We collaborate and make greatness. And today we got together to celebrate, you know, pride and culture. And I love the fact that Michaels is so open and, and embracing of that. And the fact is we're all, when we, when we all bleed, we all bleed crafts and supplies. Listen, that's what it is, that's what it is. Okay, so today, we're going to get right to it because this one is going to be a lot of fun. Um, get ready because we are bringing to the stage our resin diva, Ms. Ziva Perkins. How you doing, girl? Hey. Hey, girl. <laughs> this is Ms. Ziva Perkins, and she is with Z Shante Designs. Her Look, her name is bougie, Z Shante. <laughs> it just kind of rolls off, the, and it has the accent. So, you know, it's extra, right? And it's fine because we love it. We love it. So welcome to the stage, Miss Ziva. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate being here and I'm excited. I'm excited for you too. You got a lot to show us today, but before we get started with that, tell, uh, tell the crowd a little bit about you, your business, how you got started and why you love doing what you do. So um, my name is Ziva and it is, my company is Z Shante Designs. My company, I started about a year ago. Um, it was actually birthed because of the pandemic. I started out making um, Ankara masks and um, it really, I just started making them for family and friends and it just kind of blew up from there. And then right before the holidays, I pivoted into making glitter tumblers um, which I thought would be like an easy segue into doing bling tumblers, but I ended up going down the resin rabbit hole and transitioned into doing coasters and most recently uh, geode artwork. I was inspired by one of my uh, tribe sisters and wanted to learn how to do it. And I took one of her classes and I just keep getting deeper and deeper down that rabbit hole. <laughs> You are all the way down the rabbit hole. Y'all see she got Michaels in the background on the wall. That literally looks like the <laughs> glitter aisle in Michaels, right? <laughs> My so, mother tells me I'm a crow. If it if it sparkles and it shimmers and I'm immediately gotta drawn have to it. it. <laughs> you gotta have it. Gotta, you gotta have, have it. it. Uh, it is what it is. I love it. I love it. Yes, Ziva's tumblers are amazing. I have one. I should have brought it over here. I might get it in a minute, but her tumblers are amazing. So today what we have is, um, oh, wait a minute, let's go back. And so you did it and you went down the resin rabbit hole and now you're able to actually um, support yourself on your habit. Like you take the product, but you make money off of it too, right? Yes. So <laughs> even though it was, um, I guess that when I did it, I never went into doing resin as a hobby. It was always something that I wanted to expand my business with. Exactly, exactly. And you're doing a fabulous job of it. So I'm gonna pop off of here 
and I am going to let you take the stage and get it popping. Let's see what you got going on. So I'm going to start with um, my resin getting it mixed up because um, it's going to take a while to uh, for it to get mixed up good and, and settled in. But what I did with this piece was I wanted something that, um, you know, was easy and you didn't have to, I mean, resin alone is already um, something that you can end up spending a lot of money on. So I created um, an SVG in Cricut Design Space. Um, I used an image that was there and of the uh, Africa content and I cut that out on my Cricut. And when I cut that out, I basically used just a regular cardstock that I that you can pick up from Michaels. And I cut that out. And what we're going to do is take that and create an outline for the um, for the wood piece that we're doing. So that what did you my do? So you I'm sorry. You mixed your resin because it's two parts to the resin. Yes, I'm sorry. There's a part A and there's a part B. I already had one part in there and then I added the other in there. And what I like to do with my resin, um, I'll start stirring it. And like right now it looks cloudy. But what I find is helpful for me is to let it sit for a minute um, and kind of make friends with each other and then continue stirring. So while I'm letting that sit, I'm going to show y'all how I did the, um, the Africa piece. So this has already been cut out on the Cricut. And basically I measured the size of my wood piece that I'm using and created like a little frame. So I'm gonna tear that off. And this is sticking a bit because been sitting on here. And normally when I do something in vinyl, this would be the part that you throw away. And this would be the part that I would use. But for the purpose of this, I am going to take this and use this as my template to um, outline my design. So I just line it up doesn't have to be perfect. I got it about the size of my wood canvas. This is an eight by eight. And you can take this down if you'd like um, for me, because it doesn't have to be that exact. Um, I am not taping it down. And what I'm gonna do is just go through and outline my shape. And you can use this pretty much for anything that you would want to create. Um, some people, you know, if you're an artist, you can just freehand draw your design in. But for those that are not artists, this is how you can create something with your own hands and pretend that you're an artist. Love it, because that's exactly what we need. And this is just a regular 100 pound uh, piece of cardstock. And you can use a pencil, you can use a pen, you can use whatever you want. Um, because what will happen is, because I wanted the design raised, um, I'm going to add a um, bead of glue onto it. So basically from here, I'm just adding a bead of glue and I'm sorry, I'm left-handed, so if I'm covering it up, let me know and I can rotate this around some. Mm -hmm. It's not me, is it?
No, I'm sorry. That was that was you know my child. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool. Is it? It's the left-handed sisters for me, right, <laughs> Tawana? <laughs> And it's funny when I was first doing this um, as my sample, my hand got tired when I got to the second row of it and I moved the blue gun to my right hand and started using my right hand. <laughs> oh, wow. Was that awkward? No, it's just I use my right hand for a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. And that usually is what throws people off because I will do some things right handed. Um, you got a little bit of ambidextrous there. Yep. <laughs> so basically I would do two rows of this um, for the sake of time. I'm not going to do that, but um, I, on my original one, I did two rows just to kind of give it some height so that I want to keep my resin that I put on the inside, inside of this block. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come and do a second row around it. And then from there, after I've, I've got the glue in place where I want it, take this outside and spray paint it with um, some paint. You don't have to do this. This is just a preference for me because I'm using dark colors. I want my base to be dark. So if you wanna do it with whatever color you like, it just kind of gives it a base to where the wood grain does not show through. And I basically um, use like a Rust-Oleum, see that, um, just a Rust-Oleum flat make sure if you're going to do anything with resin and you're spray painting it to do a flat because the glossy will make your resin um, do funny things. If you don't want to spray paint it, you can also use um, any acrylic paint. And Michael sells both the acrylic paint and the spray paint. This is an old bottle that I have in my drawer here, but any kind of acrylic paint will work as well. Could you paint it first before you put the glue on? Could you paint it first? You could, but the reason I paint it after is because I want to cover up this glue as well. So what happens after you spray paint it, you're gonna end up with, um, because of the raised size on the glue, it's gonna end up like this. Mm. So I want it to be able to see the raised edges on mine. Um, it doesn't have to be neat because all of this is going to get covered up by resin. Okay. So let me stir this some more. And get it completely done. And how you, oh, and I'm sorry, I should have started off with this. Um, on your resin, resin comes, like I said before, in a part A and a part B. And what you need to do is whatever resin you decide that you're going to use, you need to follow the instructions on there. Most US resins um, require it to be a one-to-one -one ratio. And they also recommend different safety precautions, um, wearing a respirator, wearing gloves, working in a well-ventilated area because people tend to sometimes have a um, chemical reaction because this is a chemical and what makes the resin harden is the chemical reaction that it does when you mix the two parts together. Some people, um, like I said, do have reactions to it, some don't. Sometimes there's instances where you don't have a reaction immediately, you may have one later. So for the sake of this class, I am not using the respirator because I'd end up sounding like Darth Vader <laughs> and you guys would be asking me what she, what she say. But what helps to keep the bubbles down also, um, don't do like I'm doing right now. I'm actually stirring a little bit faster than I should be. Um, but stirring slowly helps keep the bubbles down. If I was doing a coaster or something else, I would probably take a little bit more care and not getting a lot of bubbles in this. But one of the um, advantages to pouring onto a canvas like this is that it's not going to be um, anything that's deep. It's gonna be a thin layer. So with it being a thin layer, it's easier to um, take a torch and get the bubbles out. Okay. But Stirring slower is one of the things that also helps keeping you from having so many bubbles in your resin. So 
So I don't know if you can see on the camera, um, there's like little, there's a few little strings through here, but it's not as cloudy as it was before. Mm -hmm. You wanna make sure before you start doing anything that you get all of those strings. And it's the strings are basically the two resins still not being mixed together. If you don't have it mixed really good, you'll end up with your resin being tacky or it not curing all the way. Um, like if you were doing a coaster, that's one of the things that will affect it to where your coaster doesn't get hard. So it's always important to make sure you follow the instructions and take your time. Is it better to stir resin with a wooden stirrer or a plastic one to lessen the bubbles? Yes. So a wooden stir, and I actually use both. Um, I have wooden stirs. I have two different sizes that I used, um, a thin and a thick one. But to my initial stir, um, where I mean my initial mixing, I like to use either a silicone stirrer or a um, plastic stir because it does reduce the bubbles. Wooden is, wood is porous, so this will introduce more bubbles into your, your pro product. Um, if I'm doing something where I have a big batch, um, I will get, and this is actually just like a, um, a cake batter stir. This you can find in Michael's on the cake aisle um, in different colors, but this is silicone. So this is also something that's good to use as well. And I've got a few of those that I'll use from time to time. Um, a plastic, no. Are all resins hazardous? There are a few that are labeled as non-toxic. Mm -hmm. I cannot speak on those because I have not tried them yet. Um, but there are some that are labeled as non-toxic. But with anything, it's always best to use precaution and everybody reacts differently to um, things and have they have certain more sensitivity than others. Like some people um, say that certain types of resin has a um, strong odor to it. Me personally, some of the ones that people have said have a strong odor to it, I have not noticed that. The only thing that I've really had a bad reaction to is the UV resin. It gives me a headache. Mm -hmm. I've tried it, but I haven't, um, I haven't played it with it anymore because it gave me such a bad headache. Okay. So I've got all my strings out of it. There's still a few, um, oh wait, there's some in the bottom there, hold on. There's, there's still a few bubbles, but I'm not concerned about the bubbles, but I do wanna make sure I get those striations out. And I think with the resin, this is the part that takes the longest is making sure that you've got this stirred up good. And typically what I'll do when I'm working is I will just set a timer. Um, it should take you about three to five minutes to get your resin mixed up really well. And I'll just set a timer on my phone to rem you know let me know when I get close to that. And if it's not completely mixed up at that point, then I will um, just start my timer over again and um, go some more. And the other reason I like using the plastic or the uh, silicone sticks is because I can just wipe them off when I'm done and um, reuse them again. So it's less waste and they're reusable. Makes sense. So from here, what I'm going to do is pick my colors and resin can be colored with quite a few different things. Today I am using um, 
acrylic paint. I will be using acrylic ink. I'm using some black mica powder. And I'm also using a, I think I got these mixed up, and a, a bronze uh, black acrylic powder. All so of these pretty. can be purchased at Michael's. I believe this is new for Michael's. So I'm excited to try these out. This will be my first time using these. And I'm hoping that they come out with more colors as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go back and get some more later, but I grabbed these to use today. Okay. And then I'm also using this red. And this did not pretty, come pretty. from Michael's. That's pretty. So to mix my colors, um, I'm getting some disposable cups. These I got from the dollar store. Um, I like the paper ones because I can just pinch the end and it helps me with my control when I'm pouring. The other thing that I like doing, especially with my mica powders, and this is just a preference for me because I feel like it mixes better is I put my micas in first. And so I'm just using, this is actually um, a pretty generous amount. Your ratio needs to be about 10% mm -hmm. to the amount of resin that you're using. When I'm doing um, these pieces, I like for my colors to pop and to be strong. So I'll add just a tiny bit more but when I put my powder in first, I add a little bit of alcohol to the powder to mix it up. And I just take my, my alcohol and I'll just spray a little in the bottom, not a whole lot, just a little, get it wet. Oh, and that's gonna help it mix uh, better. Right. Sometimes I tend to be messy and when I do my um, mica powder into the resin, I start stirring and then I end up with mica powder everywhere. But there's no right or wrong way to do it. You do whatever works for you. Does it matter what percentage of alcohol, like 70, 90, and so on? I use 91% um, alcohol. When I first started, we were dead smack in the middle of the pandemic and alcohol was very hard to come by. So at that time I was only using what I had at the house, which was 70% alcohol. The difference between the alcohol percentages is just how fast it will dry. So you could use, if all you can put your hands on is 70% alcohol, you can use that. Um, once you get more advanced into it, there are some tricks and stuff that can happen when you actually pour alcohol into your resin, but I've only seen that done like on deep pours, but it just gives it um, a different look when you're working with your resin. So 91% um, is what most people use just because of the fact that it um, dries up faster. That is so pretty. Um... Does the resin clump if you add too much paint or mica powder? Yes, if you add more than that 10% ratio, you will end up with, I call it locking up. What happens is your uh, resin will start to uh, cure faster and it'll start getting thick and sticky on you. And you pretty much lost your resin because of that. Oh, this is pretty. So like I said, this is my first time using the black. So this does not have any shimmer to it. So I'm not going to use the alcohol ink 
um, because usually the alcohol ink is what I use so that I can get a black that doesn't have any shimmer to it. And because my base is black, I don't have to worry about this being super opaque because of the, where I'm using it on this project. But if I had a light background, I probably will add something else to it so that this would be darker, not as opaque. What brand of resin do you use? When I first started, I was using Amazing Clear Clap, Amazing Clear Cast, um, and I had bought that at Michael's, and it's um, sold in different sizes. And so I tried one of the smaller ones that, um, in case I didn't like it or I messed up, or what didn't have a whole bunch of resin left over. Now I use a combination of both. Um, when I'm working on my tumblers, I'm sorry, I want to say both. The other one that I use is um, counterculture DIY resin. And I like it with pieces like this because of how clear it is. It has a glass finish to it. The amazing clear cast, um, not saying that it does not, is I use that for projects like when I make my coasters or when I'm making my tumblers. On my, um, on my tumblers, I use it for the base and then I'll use the amazing clear cast um, as my final coat. So I'm gonna save this little bit of clear that's left off to the side because I may need to add, make some more of something or add something else to it. So with the resin, it basically it's whatever, whatever you can work better with. The other reason I like using the DIY um, the counterculture DIY is because it has a slower curing time. So the amazing clear cast, um, it, it cures faster. So I like that for my um, coasters, especially if I'm doing a lot of them and I have to send out. Um, I like it because I can pour those in the morning and that afternoon they're hardened enough to where I can take them out the mold. With the amazing clear cast, it takes a little bit longer. So something like this that I'm just gonna move and set aside, um, I'll use it for this. So what I'm gonna do now, um, the next thing is I'm gonna add some texture to my design. And I'm using a combination of some rocks and glass. These I got from Michaels. Um, I believe it's kind of over where the um, actually, I think both of these are over by where the floral stuff is, the filler and stuff. With these, these started off as just white rocks. And what I did is I took an old box and lined the bottom of the box with the rocks and then spray painted them black to get this color. This is a genius idea. <laughs> So if you if there's something that you want to use and it doesn't come in the color that you need, get you some spray paint. So if I wanted to do these in pink or if I wanted to do these in royal blue or if I needed like a specific color, I've tried this also with acrylic paint. It works just not as well. The spray paint dries faster and um, it doesn't get as sticky and gooey together. So I prefer using the spray paint to do that. Thanks. I also use my alcohol to um, do quick cleanups. Um, as I was stirring, I think I got a little bit of resin on my hands. Um, so I keep my, I, what I did on my alcohol is I just put little, I took an old spray bottle and screwed it on the top of my alcohol. So now I have a spray bottle. I also keep um, baby wipes nearby. These are great for cleaning up. <laughs> Angeline, I love you. <laughs> she says, I'm really enjoying this. Hey, Michaels, can we continue this for the rest of the year? Thanks. <laughs> I love you. Okay. And Ziva is dropping a lot of gems. She's giving you guys a lot. 
Ziva, do you have a class? I do not have a class um, as of yet. Um, if you guys are interested in learning more and you would like to take a class, message me on Instagram. Let me know that this is something that you would like to see more of. And I will add it. Okay. So as your coach, you're, you're, she, she has a class coming soon. How about that? <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Got it. <laughs> okay. Just saying. <laughs> Y'all know I went kicking and screaming down this teaching rabbit hole here. Yeah. Yep. But that's okay. <laughs> I was just giving you an opportunity to say it, but since, you know. <laughs> So basically what I'm doing here is I'm kind of deciding on where I want my rocks. Um, I'm trying to actually, I'm trying to do something different than the other one that I did so that they won't be as ex exact. But that's one of the reasons why I lay my rocks before I put the resin down. And you'll see glitter just migrates itself everywhere i don't even have gold glitter out but yet still i got gold glitter on this uh, yeah glitter goes wherever yes patty you can reach her on facebook you can definitely reach her on facebook um thank you Mar marquita thank you and she says you're definitely you're gonna have a class with a big <laughs> face um there was something i was gonna say oh just to give you a heads up we're dealing with resin that's one of the reasons why she was the last in the series because sometimes it takes a little bit longer to do this. There's a little bit more intricacy to this um, craft. So it'll run just, it's not gonna end at 4.45. Um, we're gonna get to a certain point. It's not gonna run like two hours, but you know, just wanna give you the heads up on that. Okay, so I've got my rocks where I want them. And what I'm going to do now is on the black, um, just because I'm using black, you can use the clear, but I like to use the color that I'm using on my rocks. And I just drizzle this over so it gets down in the crevices. And this is the reason why I do two layers of the um, glue. So my glue gun uh, outline that I did will act as a barrier so that my resin does not run all over the place. And the other thing I do my inside first so that as I'm pouring, if I get some on the outside, because I want the outside to be a different color than the rest of it. Um, I don't have my colors getting into each other. And if you were doing a bigger piece, um, this would actually be broken down into uh, two different days where you would do a layer and then come back and do another layer. So um, what I have figured out how to do is basically um, take and put as much as I can on one layer and then come back with the detail and bring more stuff in. And there's no right way or wrong way to do this. Um, whatever fancies your heart. Can you do this on canvas? Yes, this can be done on a regular canvas as well. Um, you will have to do more prep work doing it on canvas because resin gets heavy. And what will happen, especially if you have a large canvas is it will sag in the middle. Mm. So once it sags, then you're risking um, your resin cracking or just the whole thing bending in in the middle. So you would add like additional support like boards or something in the middle Yes, I have personally, I have not done that, but I've seen uh, where people will either pour the backside with resin to give it a base, um, which seems rather expensive to me because you're just putting resin on the back that you'll never use and see. Mm -hmm. But I've also heard of people doing um, embrace, um, reinforcing it with cardboard 
four pieces of wood. And I'm looking like, I think I may have poured too much resin. So I always keep um, molds to the side to where I can take this extra and pour a coaster or something. Don't forget about the little one over here. This looks so good. Danny says she's so proud right now. Thank you, Danny. And uh, Jessica says it's a work of art. Tamika is like, oh my God, it's so soothing. It's very beautiful, says Shante. And Yolanda said, you are talented, Ziva. Thank you. Danny is the person, um, Danny So Press. Uh, she, I took her resin class and she's the one that taught me the basics and the do's and don'ts of creating this type of stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Tawana, I do too. Tawana's like, Ziva, I love it. <laughs> she got a bunch of A's. <laughs> <laughs> and what I like about resin, especially the fact that I've surrounded myself with other people that do resin, we do the same thing, but our, our style is so totally different. And you're able to take something like this and make it your own. Um. Shonda says she's going to go out back and find some wood. So she <laughs> and you can do that. You don't have to do like a regular canvas. You can just take a regular piece of wood and use it as a canvas. You can take trays. You can take uh, basically, you can pour resin on whatever you want to pour resin on. I love it. It's so beautiful, right, Pauline? Um, Patty says she's awestruck. The technique is amazing. And then what I'm doing here is just kind of spreading it out. Oh, one important thing I forgot to mention. Um, on the side, I put some blue painter's tape. I'm sorry, I meant to show that before I got started. Did it some, some blue painter's tape to protect my sides so that when the, if the resin runs on the side, it does not ruin my sides. Is anybody working along? I'm sorry if I didn't say that and y'all didn't do yep. that. We got a couple of people. Tracy is. Let me see. Let me check and see. Gallery. I know Tracy is. Krish is. So they both know to do that already. And shout out to Tracy. Tracy is my first ever, ever resin class. Um, she's the one that started my rabbit hole. Yeah, we are all enablers. Yes. That's why I love my tribe. <laughs> yeah, the tribe rocks. La Laquita says it's beautiful. I can't wait to see the finished product. Cheryl says this is a whole another level, another level of crafting. You would think it would take days to create this beautiful piece. I know, right, Yolanda? Well, actually, actually what, yeah. yeah, actually what I would do after this, once this dries, um, I'm going to show you guys the next level. It does take a couple of days um, because what I'm going to do once it dries, I'm actually going to do another level. I just saw it. Oh, there we go. Janice. Raven says, we are loving this cousin. Beautiful, awesome Ooh. job. Denise, Dolores, and Celeste. Aw, that's my family.
So you the are other, torching. Now I'm torching, and I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but mm -hmm. there's the little bubbles that are here as I'm torching. Um, the bubbles are popping. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get your torch too close because you will burn your resin. Yep. So I what see. I do is just keep moving quickly with it. <clears throat> and what the torching does also besides um, in addition to popping the bubbles it warms up your resin so it can move a little bit more so what's happening here in the middle is the colors are starting to move and fuse together and then i'm going to add um, a little bit of gold to it now Can you use a heat gun also? Yes, you can use a heat gun. Your heat gun will cause it to move a little bit more. And I'm trying not to move it around too much. So here's the gold flakes. And I'm just taking one of my popsicle sticks that has a little bit of resin on there, stuck it down in there to get some gold flakes and then putting it in a cup with some clear resin. How long does it take this to completely dry? Depending on the resin that you use, um, it will be, depending on the resin you use, it will be dry to touch and maybe at least 24 hours. But overall resin itself takes about, and again, it depends on what resin you're using. It can take anywhere to 30 to 45 days for it to completely cure and harden. So like if I was mailing this out, even though I might be finished with this, maybe, you know, if I work on it tomorrow um, and do my next layer, I'll probably do a final coat, which will be my third layer. After that third layer, I try to wait a few weeks for that resin to uh, get completely hard because what I don't want to happen is for me to package this up and go to send it to somebody, especially with it being summertime and the heat the way it is now. And this project, the resin to get soft and it arrives with all the crinkles in it where it was wrapped in bubble wrap and wrapped in paper. Mm. And then my customer will end up with something that has, you know, a bunch of divots and dots in it. So I try to make sure that it's cured completely before I ship anything out. <clears throat> That makes so much sense. Sheila says, she said, Sheila says, so she's going to just get some resin so she can use a torch. <laughs> she <wants laughs> <use> a torch. <laughs> and the yes. torch that I have is basically the torch that you use to make creme brulee. So mm. um, if you're just buying it to use to the torch, make some creme brulee and then you can have a sweet dessert too. <laughs> Um, Shalita says that the letters that you sent to her, she got them today and she said they look like glass. She, they're gorgeous. She says, thank she you. Can you put it in the oven to cure? No. Um, no resin should not go in the oven. Um, if you want to, I personally, I've never done this, but there is a, um, a piece of equipment that is made to harden resin quicker and it's basically kind of like a heater um, but never put resin into anything that you would be cooking dinner for your family with um, this is a chemical the resin that i use is food safe once it is completely cured but not before then carol says that she has got some popcorn and she's watching this like a movie she <laughs> She says, don't judge me, <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> no judgment. So all I'm doing is taking my popsicle stick and just kind of drizzling uh, the gold in where I want it. And again, there's no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this. If you wanted to do this and not use gold or not use the gold flakes, you can do that. So 
look, you can see her reflection and stuff is so shiny and glassy. You and it's not even dry yet. Right. So the last thing that I'm going to do to this, just because I want to add a little bit more sparkle, uh, this came in a big pack of like six or seven. I got this at Michael's. There was a bunch of colors on it. And this was one of the packs of glitter I bought when I first started um, with resin, just trying to see if I was going to like it or not. Um, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Forgive me. No, I was just saying I'm just adding that to this existing resin here so I can add a little bit more sparkle in there. Can you do this part after it dries or do you have to do the gold on the same day or time? No, you can do this later. I like doing um, my gold through right here because what I'm gonna do next after I um, put this on here is take my um, heat gun and just kind of move it around a little bit. But this can actually be on the second layer. Um, it gives it a little bit more layers. And in all honesty, when I do my second layer, I probably would add even more gold to it at that point. Team, can you put the supplies in the chat, please. Um, how did you know that you could do this or would he, women? How did you know you could do this or would even like working with resin? So um, I just tried it and Once I made a couple of things and it was a, to a point to where like, I just, I didn't hate it. I was like, oh, okay, um, this might work. Oh, I have a feeling I'm gonna lose a lot of resin. Oh, let's add some crushed glass to it. Just because. Because we like the glitter and we like the sparkle. And I really did try to get this down to less time. Oh, you're doing good. You're you're almost done. <clears throat> right, Tawana. We are extra with extra <laughs> A. You're right. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be my first layer. I'm going to set this aside. And what I would do from here on my next layer, this is one that I already did. And the, what I'm gonna do is show y'all how I'm finishing off this um, the edges here. And I'm just basically taking a gold pen and going around the edges I know, Felicia, it's better than watching HGTV. That's right, it is. <laughs> I just realized my new pen. Oh, here it is. I was like, right. where's the new pen at? <laughs> And then all I'm doing is taking the gold pen and going around the edges using my hot glue line as my um, guide and adding the gold edge along the side. Exactly, Elizabeth. <laughs> it looks so good. Man. And some, some artists will take and take the pen and do lines through here. Um, and I've seen some beautiful pieces like that. It's just not my preference. I don't like to do the thick lines. What I do is actually take a piece, I'm sorry, a small, um, small little bit of resin as I'm finishing up and add some gold mica powder to it and just kind of drag, drag it through where I want it. 
<laughs> I got to do this. Oh, uh, y'all. I love her. Look, look. <laughs> look how she looking at her like, oh my God, I love <laughs> it. Oh my God. This is so cool. That's what she like a big, like a big kid. I love it. <laughs> Oh, yes, Shonda. It is great, right? Let's, as she's doing this, let's see. Where's Tracy? I'm going to show Tracy the place. There you go. Let's see. I can't hear you. Let's see. Can I request you to um unmute? I can't do it from here. Let me take you off a of spotlight, then maybe I can do it. Um, Give me one second, I can do that for you. Thank you so much, sweetheart. That would happen right in the middle of the doorbell rings. <laughs> I think that's, and they drove off, so that's either UPS or Amazon or something. <laughs> um, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, but you have, yeah, you got the camera. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry. So I just did a heart. I didn't do the cut out. And you know, I like my swirls. Yes, so. honey. And she's doing swirls with her toothpick. Yep. That's Tracy. exactly how I do my gold. Tracy has done her swirl. She has been the MVP of the day. She has done every one, every craft today. I love it. I love it. We're going to come back. Let's, let's look at this now, though. Look at that. So basically, all I did was take the gold pen. Um, this is Decacolor Premium. Um, I do not believe Michael sells this, but they do sell... Um, the Krylon ink pens. So any of those will work. And I just went around the outline here. And then once you do that, I will come back and do a what's called a blood coat over this to just seal everything in and give it a final shine on it. It'll take out any imperfections. Like if you accidentally want to add something to there or if you've got some uh, little divots in there, the clear coat will go through and like right here, I've got a little divot in here. So a clear coat will fix all of this stuff. And then from there, I'll take the blue tape off the side. And once I take the blue tape off the side, I'm going to add gold onto the edges mm. to give it the final look. Do y'all see that? That thing is bad. That thing is bad, man. I love it. So all I do to do this gold on the edge is take, um, this is a big bottle because I use a lot, but I just basically take some um, gold um, alcohol ink. I think Michael sells the smaller bottles. I got the big bottle off of Amazon. And I'm gonna take that, pour it into a little cup and I transpose my gold into a smaller bottle so it's just more manageable for me. And I want to say I got these little bottles from Michaels as well. They don't have this exact one. They have something similar. And I'm just going to take a brush. And this is just a regular, I think this was like a pack of eight brushes that I got out the paint section where the artist paint and stuff is. And I'm just gonna brush that on the sides. When you're done, somebody wants to know how did you marble, um, A.L. Clark, how did you marble the outside on that particular piece when she, like that? What did you do? I, I used two different colors. Um, the base of it is just a black with no shimmer to it. And then the part that looks like it's marbled, it's actually a um, mica powder that has a shimmer in it. And I want to say the color was, I think it was like called black silver, or it might have been a, 
I had a hard time finding black that didn't have a lot of shimmer. This might be one of the ones that has the, actually it is. This is just a regular black um, that has a shimmer in it. And I actually got this from the Kai Designs. That's actually me. <laughs> the other side, that's the other side of me. My craft side. Oops. I know, Carol is gorgeous. Yeah, it's called um, Midnight. Midnight. And I may have added a little silver to that now that I'm thinking about it more. That is so. So basically, great. I would just paint the whole side. And all I did was this is just the straight alcohol ink and painting it on. So when I finish with this, I will come back behind it with um, some polycrylic finish. This is over by the spray paint. They have the small uh, jars like this. Oh, actually I got this one from Hobby Lobby, sorry. Ooh, uh -uh, please. But please. Michaels please. sells this as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Michaels does sell this um because I've seen it after I bought this one I saw it over there and I was like oh they got this here too so and it's over by the spray paint as well my bad I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> how do you look the brush with the resin on it um this does not have resin on it I don't use um these type of brushes with resin. This is just alcohol ink. There's no resin in this. This one is a silicone brush. And what I would do is just let this dry. And when it dries, it'll just peel right off. Or I could take um, a paper towel with some alcohol on it and it just wipes off. and it comes right on. Same thing with your popsicle sticks. Um, these can be reused again. And I just spray that with, with spray that with some alcohol. And why Clark says she loves peeling the resin off. I do too. You just pick yes. it. We got problems. Yeah. We, we special. <laughs> <laughs> we extra. But that's it. So well, let's see that finished product again. That thing is so beautiful. Y'all running up to Michael's right now. What time? It's 4.58 where I'm at. What time? they <laughs> Y'all, you know, you running up there to get some rocks and some glitter and all that stuff. That is gorgeous. Y'all drop it in the chat and let her know that you, you uh, enjoyed this. Wasn't she just awesome? Yep, you can purchase the silicone brush at Michael's. That's yes. right. Um, you little found you found a wooden canvas in your room. I'm sure you did, AL. If you are a <laughs> hobby, I'm sure you got everything somewhere buried in the room. If you're really a, a true crafter. Okay, let's see. Let's look at um and then make sure too straight. while your piece is drying that it's leveled so your um piece will dry without running over. Like I just had this sitting off to the side and it wasn't level and my resin started running. So Tracy is torching hers. I see you over there, Tracy. I see you. Hey, and I didn't tape off like I was supposed to because we had so many going back to back, but and that's not a problem too, because she can sand that down and get a smooth okay. finish on it. Or if she takes um, like a silicone, um, a piece of silicone, the silicone uh, mixer or just a popsicle stick and scrape along the side, she can clean that off. Love it. And I'm actually gonna use the gold leaf on the sides. Oh, nice. Oh yeah, that's gonna look good. Um, Krish, let's see where Krish is. Here we go. Oh, 
Oh, she did a canvas. Is that a canvas? Or is that wood too? Uh oh. I want to see that. Shonda said, I'm going, she going to go out back, get some wood, get some pebbles out of her flower garden. <laughs> I love it. Chris, are you coming back? Oh, there it is. Ooh. Yeah, I, I pressed the button. But yeah, this is a canvas. It's blurry in the camera, but it, this is what I'm going to put in the store to hold my that sign. Is gorgeous. But yeah. Oh, that's that's dope. That's gonna look good in the in the store. That's that's dope. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's get back to this beauty over here. All right. Let's see. I've seen people pour. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Pour over the sides. Yep. You can yes. do that. Yep. Let's see if I had any other questions. Y'all knew resin arts. Um, come join us in the group, right? Uh, let's see. Okay, I think we got all the questions. Listen, you did an amazing job, girl. I'm so Thank excited you. for you. You did a Thank great you. job, Ziva. That that is that is glorious. So on my second coat on this one, I will come back and just fix some of the areas where it bled together and then do the final coat on the flood coat on the top and then do my edges and then I'll be done with it. You'll be done with it. I love it. And it's going to somebody house. It might be somebody on here. Yep. Mm. All three of these pieces. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys noticed that each one is slightly different. Yeah. So all three of these pieces will be listed on my website and available for purchase. Actually, there's going to be four because I forgot I got the one where I um, cut out the where I did the drawing on it so that will oh, yeah. be four of them and i have a juneteenth promotion going on on my site right now there's no code needed but it's uh 19 off through monday i extended it through monday and it's 19 off of everything on the site and there's i don't know if you guys saw the link to sign up um for my email list if you sign up for the email list there's the supply list of everything that i use for today's class as well as the SVG to download for the Africa um, uh, templates. And you'll have all of that to where you create one of these if you want as well. Well, there's that y'all. <laughs> there is that. What an amazing, amazing day. <laughs> Wouldn't y'all agree? Drop it in the chat and let me know if you think it's a, it was an amazing day. It, it was, I'm trying to find, I don't know if my team got that link or not. I'm trying to find your, your, uh, the one for the, uh, did y'all get the link for her the, so they can download the email list? If not, I'll put it on my um, Instagram. In, okay. in my bio, there's a link that gives all my um, social media and my website, and I'll put the link for the download and the supply list there as well. All right. I love it. Listen, y'all, I know <laughs> Deidre, <laughs> she said she was free by this crafting event. It's been amazing. So let's, let's thank out, thank, shout out to Michaels for always coming through and allowing me to be on this platform and bring great content and more artists. Every time I come, I'm bringing somebody. If it ain't me, it's going to be me and somebody amazing. Um, and I, I appreciate it. Yes, uh, Shantae, thanks to Michaels. Um, make sure that you let Michaels know that you appreciated this um, and that they do that in the diversity that they are displaying, not only in our community, but all communities to let everybody see that there's creativity, no matter where you look, there is creativity and to appreciate those cre creative people around you. I am excited to have been a part of this um, I am excited that we um, are going to be doing more. You can definitely reach out to me. Uh, again, I'm Miss Creative CEO. You go ahead and find me at MissCreativeCEO.com. 
on Instagram, Miss Creative CEO on Facebook, Miss Creative CEO. And if you want to get to know me a little better and also these four fab fabulous uh, artists that were on here today, or any of the artists that I'm associated with from the last 12, um, we just finished up a 12 part session uh, episode series here on the Michaels platform. All of those are on the YouTube, uh, Michaels YouTube. It's also on their website. These classes will also be on their website soon. Make sure you view them, follow all the people there uh, and get, come get to know me. You can come to the Creative Boss Collective on Facebook the Creative Boss Collective TM on Facebook, and you can get to know all of us there. I really appreciate you, Michaels, and I appreciate you, audience. Okay? Y'all had, Aziva, did you have anything else you wanted to say? No, this was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for joining me, and I look forward to hopefully creating something else with you. And thanks, Michaels, for this platform. I appreciate it. We appreciate you. Awesome, Ziva. Thank you so much. And all the Thank other you, ladies, Orion, uh, Shalin, Ziva, and Felicia, y'all rocked it today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. All right, y'all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be, be great. I'm going to holler at y'all. I'll be back soon. Trust that. All right? <laughs> <laughs>